Frank Austin on the Georgia played against. Played against you know what? The funny thing is, they called they, that. If you saw two tight ends a previous show against our ever, and, or, or, and or their tight ends, that, like Dale did, super definitely said, monsters. They're like seven, seven, they can go six, seven, six, five, six, nine. And I don't, I don't want to. Be... And good morning, everybody. Happy Super Bowl Sunday to you and yours. It is. A, it's a, it should be a national holiday at least tomorrow, so we can get the day off work. But um, we are the Talking Hats. I'm uh, coming at you back uh, home here in Colorado. Rich is out there in BA, so you know we've got to be covering the whole country here now. Uh, we're going to be joined by two special guests today to to break down the game, and uh, they're going to share their wealth of football knowledge with us. Uh, one of them is my brother Chris, who's been on the show before, so that'll be a familiar face, and then. The other is uh, a good friend uh, of our family for a long time, uh, coached me in high school, as a matter of fact, uh, Gary Morris. Um, again, a wealth of football knowledge. He was in camp with the 49ers at one point. Um, so he's been around the game for a long time. Um, went through off-season workouts with my, my other brother, Eddie, uh, during his uh, NFL time. So, uh, you know, I'm, I feel blessed to have that experience joining us um, at some point during the show today. They'll jump in when they get a minute. So y'all see them just pop up here. Um, but to get things started, we're going to we've uh, we've touched on our thoughts about the game and all that. But, um, you know, opinions change, facts change about uh, who is in and who is out throughout the week uh, leading up. So um, we can give our last minute thoughts on it. And then when those guys jump in, we can get their perspective as well. So I will go ahead and kick it over to you, Harish. Um, I know you we're, you're on the Bengals um, uh, with the points, right? Yeah, I'm on the Bengals yeah. with the points, but I, if you want to outright have someone win, it's going to be the Rams. I chose mm -hmm. them to win it from the beginning of the season. I went back and forth after Stafford's play, but, you know, I, I'm still going to say it's going to be a close game. If you want to take Bengals in the points, you're safe. Um, this game is not going to be a blowout. I mean, it, 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 if it is, I'm going to be shocked because someone didn't show up to play. <laughs> so I, I don't think it, it, I don't think it's going to be an outright blow. It's going to be a back and forth. It's going to be a very, very, uh, how, how do I put it? Very entertaining game because this is going to be a first time a Super Bowl is going to be aired out. It's going to be a shootout. If one team gets, so? out, I'm sorry. You think so? Oh, I think, I think it's going to be a shootout because if you look at the running game for both teams, they, they have it, but they don't rely upon it. And they're saying this game is going to be re relied upon the running game. But I don't think so, because at the end of the day, if the running game is not going to be working, they're going to be passing the ball. And when you have prolific wide receivers, I mean, you, it's not like, oh, they're just secondary or, you know, they're mediocre. These are high level, high talented individuals on both sides. Yeah. And they're. And they have their second and, and their complementary receivers could start on any other team. I mean, at the end yeah. of the day, so I just feel that they're going to use the running game to set up the pass. Both and sides. that's why it's going to be a shootout. Both sides will. Both sides will. Because if, if you look at it, if one side falls down by a touchdown or so, they're not going to run the ball. They're going to mm -hmm. use the run to set up the pass and they're going to pass out through because this is a Super Bowl. This is like, this is done. You this don't have it. any more games. This is, this is where <laughs> legacies are built. Uh, nope. Careers are made. Jobs are saved. All mm -hmm. that. Um, so, yeah. What, like, I mean, to me, it, it's going to be an entertaining shootout game. That's It's not going to be a – but I will say this. It depends on which defense steps up. And I think the Rams defense is going to step up in, the, in those crucial moments to stop Joe Burrow and the Rams are going to win. That's this, that's my take on it, but it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. Yeah. Uh, you know, with the, with the defensive side, I think uh, both defenses, well, you say shootout. I can see a shootout on one side. Uh, I can see the Rams running up the score. <laughs> I can see them jumping on them early uh, and, and just getting going and, and, and not looking back. That wouldn't surprise me at all. You know, they jump on, get a good lead. And then their defense just closes the door. Uh, the over under mm -hmm. is 48 and a half. And I, mm -hmm. I, I believe I put, uh, you know, a dollar or so on the under. I, <laughs> so with you thinking it's going to be a shootout, you think it's going to be over 48 and a half? Uh, what's, what, quick shot. What's up, Gary? Uh, Gary just jumped in with us. We're, we're kicking our thoughts back and forth on the game real quick. And then we'll, we'll jump in and intro you and all that and get going. But uh, awesome. yeah. Good morning, gentlemen. Good, Good morning. morning. Um, See that's see that's my problem. I'm having. I'm kind of debating. I don't. It. I. I, I I'll put it this way. I'll. I'll, I'll go. I'll go against it and say, yeah, it's going to be over forty. It's going to be over forty. Forty-eight and a half. Over forty and a half. I'll just well, have to change the, the other side. Make I got the under. You got the over. I like I got, that. Yeah. I like. I like, I like, I like, I like, I like the conflict. 
Um, <laughs> but like I said, we've got a special guest joining us here, uh, Gary Morris. Uh, like I, like I, I gave you a brief intro before you jumped on, um, said that you know we feel blessed to have your your wealth of football knowledge joining us here on this Super Bowl Sunday morning. So I'm going to kick it to you to give a, a brief intro about yourself, and then we can uh, get into your thoughts on the game. What do you think was going to happen today? Well, good morning, everybody. My name is Gary Morris. Uh, I am a, a former uh, professional athlete uh, in, the, in the arena of football, played football at Norfolk State University, uh, then went on to be a free agent uh, signing of the San Francisco 49ers for a very short period of time and then played three years in the CFL with the Edmonton Eskimos. Nice. So, See, I didn't, uh, I didn't know that. So I'm glad. I'm glad we had you. So I could learn that little nugget about you. That's a good deal. You played arena awesome. ball too? No, I had, had a shot at it and turned it down. Um, yeah. Decided to go ahead and, and get into my professional career, uh, mm. which is uh, high school principal at this point in time. But uh -huh. um, yeah, I, I still enjoy the game. I've coached for a number of years and uh, just excited about about this, this this whole playoff series, you know, leading up to the Super Bowl has been, has been phenomenal. Yeah, and, and in the intro, I, I threw out there that you uh, were one of my coaches in high school too. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, but yeah, like I said, we... Thank you for, for coming on with us, um, sharing your knowledge with us. Uh, and go ahead and uh, you can get into your thoughts about the game coming up. Um, I've, I'm feeling like uh, the Rams are going to jump on them early and run away with it, and then the defense put the clamps on them. Harish feel like, feels like it's going to be a shootout. Uh, he's, the over-under for the game is 48 and a half. I, I got the under. He's got the over. So he, he thinks just both sides going at it. Uh, what do you think is going to happen today? Well, I, th I think they, they, I mean, you got some good defenses out there. I mean, I, yeah. I, I am concerned about that piece I, I, in terms of it, you know, being a shootout. I think that, you know, both teams have shown that they can put the clamps on an offense uh, when, when it comes time to do it. And it will come down to, you know, who comes out in the second half and makes the adjustments. I don't, I don't see, uh, uh, I, I, while there'll be a, a, a ton of nerves that will be in play in the first half, I think the team that with the makes the adjustments in the second half will, 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 will dictate. And I think it will come down to, you know, what defense uh, does, you know, the better job. Uh, so I, I probably would ride with the under if I, you know, if I were a betting man, um, only because, you know, you just got some top-notch folks out there who, who are, you know, cats on the edge. Uh, no the secondaries are, are solid. And then, you know, you, you have some linebackers also who are, who are, who are pretty good at flowing, flowing running, from, on, running the field from sideline to sideline. Yeah, especially on the Rams side with uh, Von Miller and Leonard Floyd. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're probably the top two of the faster linebackers in the league. Um, the Rams are, have dealt with some injuries in their secondary, which haven't really hampered them because you've got such yeah. a pass rush. When a right. pass rush can hide anything that's going on in the, in the secondary. So, uh, you know, like, like we both, I, I, I see fully see an under. Um, defense uh, and the Rams can lean on their running game too with that McVay scheme it's based in the Shanahan system so they haven't they haven't done that they've let they've kind of let Stafford air it out here but in a game like this if you get a lead it's time to let Akers you know tote mm -hmm. the rocket and, and run out that clock um but so you you think it's going to come down to second half adjustments I think uh the Bengals coach comes from uh McVay's and, and that whole Shanahan tree so with ha with McVay having more experience I think the more experienced coach will make those adjustments. Um, Harish, what do you, 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 on that side of it, what are your opinions on that? So, I, if you look at the Bengals have made great second half adjustments. I mean, against yeah. the Kansas City Chiefs, they, they dropped back. Into, they played a 34 defense at the second half. All they did was drop back and made Mahomes try to pick them apart. But at the end of the day, I, the Rams, what, what's really going to question is when it comes down to it is who's going to make the better save as, as, as was stated. Because in my opinion, I think the Bengals have, have proven that. I don't think the Rams have. I think the Rams stick with what they know and they might throw a wrinkle in because that front four is a beast. I mean, that front four is a beast and you have to block them. So they don't have to make anything because Aaron Donald against the 49ers, he took over that game. Mm -hmm. he, he just literally took over that game and won that game single handedly in that it, when it was like, what, I think it was like a minute left in the game and the 49ers needed to like, get, I think get a first down or get into field goal range. He just literally took over that game. So my biggest fear is yes, it may, I'm, I'm saying shoot that because I'm not going to change it now, but it's, it's. Um, now you got to stick with your guns here, man. Oh no, I'm, I'm sticking with my guns. <laughs> no riding at, the the fence. The day, at the end of the day, because what's making me say a shootout is it's how they played against the Kansas City Chiefs because they were down by 11 
right? And they were down by 11 and they came back somehow and just threw it to Jamar Chase. And, and I'm saying Jamar Chase is the X factor, even though Jalen Ramsey is a clamp down corner, clamp down corner. They find ways in the second half to get Jamar Chase open. And that opens up the playbook for the Cincinnati Bengals. Even oh, though wow. I picked the Rams to win, I'm, I'm speaking as if Cincinnati's going to win. <laughs> but, but at the end of the day, it just comes down to the, the sheer, like their offensive line, that, that's what troubles me is if Cincinnati's offensive line was, was really good, they're decent. They're not really good. They're just decent because if, if the defense, if the defensive line takes over that game for the Rams, this game's over. It, it, it's over because there's no way that nine sacks against the Tennessee Titans versus nine sacks now against the Rams. They're two different athletes. And I just feel that getting hit by Aaron Donald is completely different getting hit by someone else on the Tennessee defense. So they, that may play a little bit of a psychological game with him. And it is the Super Bowl. It's not like a playoff game. This is like all for the marbles. And what's been said about Joe Burrow in the past, like in the, in the recent weeks about how he's mentally tough, it, it's, it's going to get tested today. It's going to get really tested today and see how he can fit through that thing. But that's my two cents. I'm still sticking with the over. I'm not changing. Hey Gary, did you give a pick? Who do you who do you got in the game? I I have the Rams. I just think that they have you know more talented uh, pieces on the on the field. Uh, but again, you know, I this is where I kind of waffle back and forth. So if, if the let, let's say that the Rams do jump out and, and and get ahead, then that changes the you know the dynamic for what you know uh, Cincinnati's going to do for the game. Mm -hmm. And so the ball's going to be in the air. You have the opportunity for for some big time plays. Um, and big plays will, will will make or 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 break a game. So you know if you can capitalize on a big time play, then, then you can make, you can change the whole traje trajectory of that game uh, with that single play. Uh, we've seen it in the playoffs where where a single play or or uh, what was it? It was a stop. Um, I can't remember who made the stop uh, at the end of the half. Uh, was, oh, that the, uh, the, was that in the in Niners the game? In the Niners game, right? Yeah, it just flipped that whole game around, you know. And, right. And you know, and I think that even in the in the um, in the Chiefs game, when when uh, when that's yeah, what it was. That, that's what that, it was. That's right. What, yeah. When he didn't that score was in all the half, difference. That changed everything. And you know, and we 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 forget sometimes that that those football players are still human and they run on emotions. And so though when the emotions take over, you you got a problem. And, you know, you can't just flip the, flip the switch to turn things back on when, you know, when you have that down play, you know. So, you know, I'm looking forward to to seeing how the emotions play a part in this game because, again, I think that's a huge play piece. And then how folks respond to, you know, the big play. Does home field, because since the Rams are playing literally in their backyard, do you feel that they have more of an advantage now or it's more of a or – or, or it can be more, more – um, uh, what is that – what's that word I want to use? More of like a – pressure Not like a, more of a pressure situation yeah, there we go more pressure to win because they're playing at home i, I think it, i think it does uh, play a part uh however you know as we as we've seen throughout the playoffs folks have not been um, the home teams have not been able to shut out the the number of fans that that want to come and see the the visiting team play yeah. and so i think that every every team is going to have the opportunity to you know have their fans play a part in this game you know the the, the, the 12th man is present this weekend yeah, to, to that note, uh, the, the Niners had more fans in, fans in that stadium than the Rams did. Um, the Rams don't really enjoy much of a home field advantage with that being such a, a cosmopolitan city. Uh, people don't really show up and support. The, they're not diehards in that city. Uh, and, and then with this being a corporate crowd, too, I don't yeah. see the home field thing being playing much of an having much of an impact either way. Uh, I'm sure the, Bengal, the Bengals travel well, even though they've been bad. Their fans are diehard and passionate. If anything, I would expect them to have more there. Um, one, mm -hmm. one thing I wanted to get your thoughts on, Gary, is since you're a receiver, um, I wanted to know what you thought about Cooper Cup as a receiver. Mm -hmm. Do you think he <laughs> is a legit elite talent, or do you think he's a product, product of the system? Oh, oh no, without question, he, he's, he's, he's a top-tier talent. Mm -hmm. uh, he does the right things all the time. Uh, he, he blocks well. He runs great routes. He yeah, catches the ball in, in any blocking. situation. Yeah. Um, he, he is a motivator uh, and he's clutch. And I don't think that that, I mean, you can't, you're not clutch because of, you know, as, as, a, as a product of the, of the, of the system. Uh, he, he, he gets open regardless of where he is on the field, no matter he winds up in, you know, out wide or in the slot, 
uh, he can get open and, and he's a he's a dangerous, dangerous receiver. And then on top of that, he has another he has a counterpart on the other side of the field who opens who can open things up for him or Heck he yeah. can open for them. So you you got to pick your poison in, in that respect. But Cooper Cup is without question one of the most talented receivers that this game has seen in a while. Yeah, and and I, I, I had this other thing because uh -huh. I, I you know, having been a receiver, I, you know, I, I, I don't, you know, most receivers are called divas. He's far from one. Yeah. He's a blue collar worker. Right. He can, you can tell when he, if there's a first down, he's putting the ball down and, and, and hustling back to the huddle. He, when he scores, he acts like he's been there before and doesn't make a big deal out of it. it you know, there's excitement, but at the same time, let's get back to work is, is what his focus is. Definitely. Um, he, like you said, when it comes to blocking, he takes that as, as seriously as he's when he's running his routes. Um, mm -hmm. And he's coming on the national stage now with the huge season he's had, but I've been watching this dude. I mean, he was lighting it up Absolutely. with golf. So mm -hmm. I mean, he's, he's not a system. He gets the system guy and I, that people kick that around. I think cause he's white, you know, but, Could be. He, right. but he, he's, he's legit. Uh, elite receiver he had one of the greatest seasons of all time it's not a system thing he puts in the work and it shows on the field Rich, you got you i see you wanting to jump in there what do you think uh, i mean with cooper i mean he's he's one of those guys i call like a twitchy receiver in the sense that like he knows what he needs to do because talent wise he, he's 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 far above most receivers um at the end of the day like when, when you're seeing his route running it's very precise but it's how he shuffles his feet, right? So it's how he gets his feet in position and he moves. He's a very fluid receiver. Feet are everything. Opinion. Yeah, he's a very feet are as does, important as your hands when you're a receiver. Yeah, I mean, he, he, I call him the magic man. Now you see him, now you don't, because at the end of the day, he goes one way, the, the cornerback goes other. He's he's already down ten yards down the field. But it's it's hard to say he's a system receiver because if he was a system receiver, he wouldn't he wouldn't be very comfortable with Stafford. Because you'll get used to it because because when golf was there, there's a time where you see where golf with staffer is a different thing. I don't think so. I mean, people can say what they want. I mean, it's very difficult. The only way we can tell is if he leaves the Rams and goes somewhere else and he struggles, then you can say it was part of the system. But until mm -hmm. then, I, I just don't see it. Like, it's just very difficult to, 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 to make that kind of comparison. That's just me. Yeah, like Gary said, he he's not a guy who's going to struggle anywhere because he just works so hard. When yeah. you put in that kind of effort, even if the numbers aren't there, you're going to see the passion mm -hmm. on the field, and, and that passion is infectious. His, his teammates oh, yeah. rally around that. So yeah, and, and and that carries on as Gary said was like in, in any game, if your team is down, it only takes one individual to bring that up, and Emotions, he can yeah. do that. And 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 I, and I believe that's what's going to happen is it's going to be a stalemate. It's it's that one person who makes that big play can swing the wind, either or. And he did. Uh, Last uh, two weeks ago, mm -hmm. he, he won that game. So, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, at the end of the day, it, this I, I just say it's going to be a fun Super Bowl. It's this is going to be one of the funnest Super Bowls we've seen in a very hopefully long time. it has like, that yeah, potential. Yeah, I, I I hope it's not like a forty nothing blow up on the second half or something. We're just like yeah. <laughs> Chris uh, said he's going to join us in about five minutes, and when he jumps cool. on it, we can get his thoughts on the game. And then I want to he is always putting out hot takes on his Facebook page about. Uh, Stafford and the quarterbacks. So I definitely want to get into it with them on that. Um, but while we are, while we're going here, uh, talking about receivers, uh, we got Jamar Chase on the other side. Uh, have you have you seen a lot of him? Uh, if so, what are, what are your thoughts on him and his potential? So I, I think that he he has he has a great deal of potential, and and he um, unfortunately you know he's on, he's on a team where he can shine, and so mm -hmm. therefore you know he's he's getting a lot of opportunities to 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 showcase all of his skills. Um, he's, you know, he's come through in, in, a, in a number of situations. I, I don't put him on, on the same level as a, as a Cooper Cup, only because, wow. again, I just I think that Cooper Cup just does many more things the right way all the time. It's mm. just something that he, he just built that way to perform in the manner that he does. Uh, but 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 Chase is, is is definitely talented without question, and he works very very hard. Uh, he's, he, he's one of he's he's going yeah, to be the guy who they if, when they, if they decide to, to double they're going to double him and so someone else someone else on on that Bengals uh, receiving core is going to have to show up. That's what we were talking about. Is yeah. like if you look if you take the receiving cores for both teams, their secondary receivers can start anywhere in the league. Mm -hmm. um, well, it's, and, it's tough to call Odell Beckham a secondary receiver. Yeah, I mean he's yeah. a, he's a legit I mean, he's one probably, receiver, I mean, one talent, one A. There's yeah, one and one. He's a. Cooper Cup's one A. 
he's one a because at the end of the day like he i just think obj got a raw deal anywhere he went like i mean they weren't i mean that, that, that's just me personally I, I liked when he was with the giants i liked when he was with um the browns but he just got the raw end of the deal but here in, in, in uh, here in la I, I think he just he just he's at that home run hitter if you can't get him if, but if you don't if you don't cover him it's going to be trouble it's, it's just going to be trouble but I just feel that, like, the secondary receivers for the Bengals, if they don't show up today, they, they lose this T. game. T. Higgins and Tyler Boyd. Yeah. If they don't show up, they lose this game. And also their tight end. What's yeah. crucial is their tight end is out. I uh, know, actually, he's playing. Uh, he's playing today. So we have to see if that sprained MCL is really just going to affect his route running or his blocking because at the end of the day, he's he's a huge, like, he, he eats up chunks in the middle. He's a so, contributor, yeah. Yeah, so it, that's going to be – a kind of a watch if any of if any of those two things don't happen i think this is this may be a slaughter <laughs> so so we have to see I do, I do think that you know it's going to be who, who shows up for the Bengals as a, as a check down receiver uh-huh. um because with the with the rush that the rams are going to be able to put put up against yeah. this, this this offensive line um it's going to be you know joe barrels being able to find that that that, that check off i mean check down receiver who's going to then open things up and maybe pull some of that pressure off but you know, um, I don't see again. I don't see the, the Rams having a, a huge issue with being able to 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 not 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 shut out Chase, but to tamper his his productivity to the point where they'll have to go elsewhere. Yeah, Ramsey's got to be on him all game, um, mm-hmm. and I, I don't even think if 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 they're feeding him, you might have to get somebody over the top on him. But um, I, I think Ramsey just, you know, down for down will be able to, you know, not maybe not stop him, but slow him down. And then there's speculation that uh, to slow down that the, the rush, they're going to go with the screen game with Mixon. Mixon. So that they're, we're expecting that to be the, uh, the check down scenario. Mm-hmm. He's a good pass catcher out of the backfield, too. No question. Uh, the tight end is healthy. That'll that'll help with all that. But uh, see, the the thing is, I don't like the screen against the Rams because they, they just have a fast defense. So fast. Yeah. yeah, they're just sheer speed and try to do a screen pass. I mean, at the end of the day, if they can read it, it's going to get tipped and intercepted. I mean, Better do it, those it, against it, uh, opposite Aaron Donald because if you're throwing those at him, mm-hmm. I mean, he gets mm-hmm. up, he gets after the ball. Yeah, and Von Miller. I mean, that I mean, he's just an animal. I mean, he's so quick that. He can read it even before he even gets set up. He knows. I mean, they all study film. They're all very intelligent individuals at the end of the day. So you have to come up with a scheme that's kind of like a check down Charlie, or you just have to make them so frustrated or go high tempo. I think if you just go high tempo, no huddle, Tire them out. that may kind of hamper the rush. <laughs> got to wear them out, yeah. <laughs> you got to wear them out somehow. But at the end of the day, you're going to wear yourself out too. Because big guys, <laughs> they, they only can take so much, like, like no huddle. <laughs> yeah. But – um. So if you had a um, so if you had to compare Cooper Cup to an old receiver that you played with, Gary, who would that be? Like, what, what does he remind you so of? So I'd, I'd probably say, I, to be honest, and, and folks are going to look at me like I'm crazy, but I would say Jerry Rice. I knew, I knew you were going to say, say that. that. You know, I don't think okay. you're crazy. I, yeah. I had the opportunity to watch to to be out there with him, and 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 not I didn't work out with him, but because he was in uh, contract disputes during that time, mm-hmm. but to watch him work out on his own, totally on his own. You know, says a great deal about you know what you're willing to do as as an athlete, and he put the craft first. Uh, it's and, you know it's it's ultimately showed shown in his his productivity and his you know the records that he set and the numbers he's all he's put up throughout his career. But it, it's a, that amount of work that you're willing to put in when you're working, but when you're doing things on your own, so that when you do come off of that contract dispute, I mean time period, you're ready to step on the field and, and make an impact. That's the kind of work I think that Cooper Cup does uh, every single day. Yeah, it's funny you say that, man. Uh, man, Eddie, we're talking about Ben Simmons, and I kind of brought that up about how it shows that he doesn't <laughs> put in that kind. Of, he doesn't put in that kind of work uh, mm-hmm. in the off season and all that. He just he gets paid and, and just hits the court and can't shoot, can't hit free throws. So that that's exactly that kind of work separates good Ben Simmons is good from great, you know, LeBron, uh, who right. this shot has gotten better every year. Uh, guys who clearly you you see. Uh, Cooper Cup, he 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 was fine before. He was good. He's always been good. This season, he took a leap, like, and that's right. showing the kind of work that the man is putting in. So we got Chris joining us here. We we teased that we're going to get into uh, after we get to fix on the game. We're going to get into the quarterbacks breaking down each quarterback for the game because I know how you feel about Stafford. So <laughs> so yeah, uh, <laughs> we've we've 
we've given our thoughts on what we expect to see today. Um, we do expect to see who's uh, ultimately who do you, who do you pick to win it? Uh, I think I'm going with the the Bengals just because my you know wow my brain won't let me pick the. <laughs> 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 that, that, that's you, you need to stop being so stubborn you know, with yourself. <laughs> I get it. I get Stafford, I get it. <laughs> yeah. So if you flip it around and like so uh Tom Brady, for example, has been to the Super Bowl so many times. Um, you guys have all read the articles every year. Um, you know, when like mid season, same with that, the same that they do with LeBron, like when their team is struggling or Brady doesn't have the weapons, they say, oh, well, this is the year that, you know, he's going to fall off a cliff. But every year, he's Super Bowl. Um, on the flip side of that, Stafford, you know, he, he he has the opposite of that going on. So I think that uh, I would always pick Brady until he would have to prove me wrong. And Stafford's going to have to prove me right in this situation. So I'm sorry. I can't, <laughs> can't go with him right now. That is fair. Uh and yeah. I, that's that's why that's the only reason I struggle with the game too, making my pick. Uh, everything outside of him, I mean, that's a Super Bowl team. But he he always has it in him to make that one play that <clears throat> cost him the game. So uh, well, if you look at it, Cincinnati has won on the road every single time they've played. So they're yeah. they're pretty. I mean, they're battle tested, and they're coming into this game on our road game because it's at like it's not at a neutral site. So, Chris, you did be yeah. onto something, but I'm still sticking with the Rams. Uh, okay, and I love me some Aaron Donald. I mean, he's probably one of those guys. You know, he's kind of like on the level of like he's not on the total level of a quarterback in terms of being a game changer, but. Um, you know, he might be in the, in the future, probably five, six, seven years uh, from now, mentioned with the guys like Lawrence Taylor, the Ray Lewis, and those type of guys. I mean, so, yeah, I, you know, I like him. I like Jalen Ramsey. You know, they got a, a nice squad over there. Cooper Cup, uh, obviously Odell. Uh, but, yeah, I just take the quarterback. <laughs> we were talking about Cooper Cup. Um, get your thoughts real quick on him. I, mm -hmm. I was asking Gary if he thinks he's a product of the system. Or if, or if he's a, a legit uh, elite talent, what's your opinion on that? Cooper's got some skills. Um, in a different way, he kind of reminds me of um, uh, what was his name? Jordan, uh, the Packers receiver. Uh, Jordan. Uh, uh, he, uh, uh, he was drafted the same year as Papoose. We. Uh, I know he. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Jordan something. Um, and uh, dang it, we played against them in college in Kansas state. And he's kind of a sneaky, fast guy. Like, um, and he can get open and, and things like that. Jordy, Jordy, Jordy Nelson. Jordy yeah, Jordy. Nelson. yeah. He reminds me a little bit of him in a different way. They're different styles. Um, but, uh, it, it's kind of sneaky fast. Like where you don't think that he's going to be, but he, take one false step and he gets open and catches it for a touchdown a little bit. Um, when they went to the Super Bowl the last time, he was on that roster and did well, but nobody ever heard of him until I guess Matt Stafford opened him up. So um, he, he, he's, uh, yeah, he's going to be okay. He probably got a chance to be a Hall of Famer if they win the Super Bowl, so we'll see. <clears throat> yeah, definitely with having one of the best seasons of all time. Um, mm -hmm. And what, that's a, uh, Let's get into Joe Burrow real quick. We've, we've beaten Stafford up enough here. Uh, let's get into Joe Burrow. Um, Gary, what are your thoughts on, on where he stands? Uh, if, okay, if they win this game, where, where would you rank him uh, going into next season as far as the quarterbacks in the league? Does, does he jump into the, the top five as a Super Bowl winner, or um, is, he, is he still just outside of that and trying to get in? I, I still think he's just outside of that. There, there are a number of teams who have quality quarterbacks that just didn't make, you know, make make the the play to get into the playoffs or to you know, move forward in the playoffs. Um, I think he's still. I mean, he, he's he's definitely a, a huge talent. Um, he's got a lot riding on him. He's, he's riding a great momentum wave at this point in time. Um, there are a couple of situations, you know, in the playoffs where where a play here or there, you know, would, would have bounced them as well, and then we wouldn't be having this conversation. So. Yeah. Um, I, I'm proud of, of what he's done because I think that, you know, you know, you have someone who's as young as he is, you know, um, making the stance that, he, that he's making. Uh, but I, I don't, I don't, I can't put him in the top five, even if they win, uh, unless, well, 
he he would have to carry the team, in in my opinion. That would be that would include you know some some you know some clutch runs uh, at crucial times, uh, making making throws, making a couple of throws that we don't see we don't see him making on a regular basis. Um, he, he he may need one of those you know uh, Ben Roethlisberger in, at the end of the end of the game, uh, you know in the back of the end zone, uh, you know tippy toe t- uh, catch type touchdowns sure. in order for me to change that. But uh, while I don't think that he will be in the top five, I do think that he he, he has a, a, a lot of skill on on his plate to allow him to to help his team win. So Harish Gary said, uh, even if Joe Burrow wins, he's still trash. Uh, no, I'm joking. <laughs> Thirty-two teams, you know, <laughs> thirty-two teams. Like, him not being in the top five don't make him trash. <laughs> <laughs> but but Harish, if, if the Bengals win and Joe Burrow's the MVP, is he in the top five for you? Man, I mean, it, I, I don't think so. Not not for me. I mean, it's it's a one year kind of thing. The stars aligned right for the Bengals to this year. Mm-hmm. Who knows? Three years down the road, even next year, or the you know, we we have to see more. We can't just crown somebody just because they had a very good year. He has all the skill sets. He has everything that can make him the next X Y Z great quarterback. People are comparing him to Dan Marino already. Tim, people are comparing him to this. And I'm like, well, guys, like, I understand all this stuff. But at the end of the day, his sample size is one year. He got injured last year. So let's see how he goes forth before we start crowning people this or that. He has all the talent to become the next Brady or the next Marino or anywhere just by arm strength. Maybe not by Super Bowls, but just by arm strength alone or whatever you want to put his little spice on him. But at the end of the day, I'll say top top nine. Top nine. Not, not even top, top, top nine. I should make you nine. I should make your name eight better than him, but I won't. Uh, Chris, <laughs> where, where, would he, where does that land for you? If he wins and, he, and, there, and he's MVP, is he a top five QB going on the next season? Uh, well, I'm glad y'all started talking about crowning people because it's funny you say that, even if he wins the Super Bowl and gets MVP, because not too long ago, we were talking about Patrick Mahomes and everybody was, you know, on off, oh, he's going to win the, the next 12 Super Bowls, Yeah, you know, uh, every year of that contract he got, basically. Um, and, you know, here he is flaming out um, late in the year, so... It just doesn't work like that. That's why, you know, people couldn't really appreciate Brady for what he really was for consistently getting back to the Mm -hmm. Super Bowl. With any roster they put around him, he was always, you know, at the end of the year, we knew he was going to be there. Um, So, yeah, Joe Burrow, um, I have a problem because he reminds me a little bit of, um, now bear with me now, Carson Wentz and uh, to a lesser degree, uh, Trevor Lawrence. If you really watch him play, um, both of those guys, hold on to the ball to a fault. It's not as much like a Ben Roethlisberger. You know, he takes his bumps and bruises, creates a crazy play, and then gets the ball downfield. It's kind of like he's taking some shots, and it looks like the offensive line maybe not blocking, but, this, you know, he's he's holding on to the ball, you know, a lot longer than what he should. So that kind of gives me cause as far as looking at his – projecting his future. Um, he's he's got to show me he can stay healthy and get rid of the ball. Um you know, so he he could possibly win. He showed me a lot in terms of his, uh, you know, I mean, he's a clutch player. Like, he makes big plays in games. Um, he's been in the playoffs, done more things than a lot of quarterbacks playing right now. Um, he's already surpassed Ryan Tannehill, in my opinion. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I'm just saying. Uh, you know, Tannehill has had his chances. Tannehill reminds me a lot of Josh Allen. Uh, you know, so these guys got to show me something before I can move them up into a top 10. Um, but yeah, for to answer your question, uh, long winded, yeah, I guess I put, uh, I think I put Burrow, if he, even if he has a good performance and they lose to so, the Super Bowl, but it's not like his fault or anything where he choked, I think I put him in my top five going into next year. <clears throat> I just got the 10 minute warning. Um, we can keep going if y'all want after this because uh, we've got another meeting set. So if we if we get hot and y'all want to keep going, I, that's up, I'll leave that up to y'all if you want to keep going with us. But um, I, you thought your comparison was crazy with uh, 
who did you say? Dang it, slipped my mind just now. Gosh, <laughs> you compared him. No, you compared uh, Burrow to. Uh... Oh, Carson Wentz. Right. Was... Um, you think yours is crazy? Listen to this one. I kind of compare him, and this is this is just on how they play, not on what I see him his career turning out to be. But um, I see I compare him to kind of like Ryan Fitzpatrick. Hear me out. <laughs> so oh. he plays real oh. loose. He plays real loose and real cool. And he he gave and what you said about him holding on to the ball too long. He got sacked fifty one times this year, and six in sixteen games. Um, but he, even with all that, when he's under pressure, he stays loose. He stays cool. You never see him get flustered. And Ryan Fitzpatrick, he does. He's out there. He would throw a pass anywhere. Uh, he's just he's, he never gets flustered. And and uh, and Burrow is that way. The difference is he has the arm talent to to fit those balls in. Where Fitzpatrick is just throwing it to the spot open. Um, Burrow will get it there, and that's why he, mm-hmm. he had 14 picks, I think, on the season and 34 yeah. touchdowns. Um, 14 picks is a lot, but when you're under that kind of pressure, that's going to happen. Well, I, not that he's under pressure, that he's holding on to the ball too long. Correct myself there. But um, yeah, I, I, is he top five uh, if, they, if he wins and they get MVP? Like Gary said, I don't think he, he's scratching it. Uh, not quite there yet. There are still, uh, I can still name five guys that I'd take over him at least. So, I like their guys. Like who? I would like to hear those five guys that are buzzing right now. Mahomes, um, Russell Wilson. Hey. Go ahead. I, you, you broke up there. I said you better not say Aaron Rodgers. Uh, if you you, I don't like Aaron Rodgers. I, I, he's going to come here uh, to Denver, and I'm not a huge fan of that. He'll make them regular season champions, but he's not going to take them to a Super Bowl or anything. But Aaron Rodgers, he, I'll never have him in my top five. Um, Mahomes, oh, Russell come Wilson. On. You have to have Aaron Rodgers. Nah, in I don't. Five at least. At right. least the five. Why do you have to? Well, what is it? I mean, I would say this. I mean, like his, the stats prove to himself that he's a top five quarterback. If you look at the statistics, I Which mean, are we looking at? I mean, QBR. Didn't he, didn't, he and, win, didn't he win MVP this year? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, they are. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't. Yeah. I, I don't see how you can't put him in in the top five. I. I I don't know. I don't. Know. I, I think that first of all, he, he. So this is this is the piece I think that he's going to bring wherever he goes. He's got the he's got the win percentage behind him that makes folks want to come play want to play with him because he knows the path toward toward winning. And I think it, it's not is it's it's not the same as it is with with the Brady, but it's going it's walking down that path where. He can take a receiver and make that receiver into a tool that he can use to get to get his offense down the field. And I think that's what Brady does. Brady, Brady makes makes receivers. It's no different than what Chris said, makes receivers, no matter what he has around him, tools to be able to work and be put and be productive. And, and see, I think what that that's what Aaron Rodgers is able to do. What you said there, you said a receiver. And that's true. Um, in Green Bay this past season, he had Devontae Adams all season, and that was it. He wouldn't look anybody else's way, and that's why they couldn't go any further. Because that's easy to shut down when you only got one guy. He made Devontae Adams great, and then that's it. Nobody else. And I think that, see, in a situation where you don't have that rule walking in and you have to find that guy or find those guys, then you start spreading the ball around a little bit. And so see, I he, think that going away from Green Bay makes it so that he has to he has to work to, to actually incorporate those folks around him to find that comfort, that comfort level. He begged the team to bring back Randall Cobb, and they did. And he didn't. He only looked at Devontae Adams. I just so. I don't I don't trust Aaron Rodgers. His personality um, mm-hmm. shot through late in the season. Like uh, like I said, I think that it's something going on between his personality and Brady's personality that it only shows up late in the season. And that's why I can't I can't put a guy in my top five. Like anybody right now, is anybody picking uh, Aaron Rodgers led team to go to the Super Bowl next year? It doesn't matter. What if he goes to the Broncos? Say he goes to the 49ers and replaces Jimmy G at quarterback. Hypothetically, they got the defense, they got everything. Running game. Well, they... I'd say they go a long way. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I, I, so, and the only one, so look, look at the two teams who were in the Super Bowl this year. Now, I don't, I don't know that anybody walking into the season picked them. I picked the Rams. The Rams, Rams were everybody's favorite. Yeah. So, Rams. but, but you, I mean, but look at Cincinnati. I mean, but look at, the, and look at the, again, the, the playoffs this year 
have been phenomenal. Where you you we've had we walk into the playoffs with 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 what? How many how many teams we we start the playoffs with? Oh jeez, they had that extra game, right? Uh -huh. Yeah, had to had to play out had to play in game. All yeah. the, every game just about along the way was exciting. Was so, that due to the a, refs not calling the good calls, or right, was right. that just sheer play? So, no. so to the to, to that point, I, th I just think that there's a ton of talent out there that that you know makes it so that I don't. It's it's not easy to pick who's going to be you know in the in those final two spots. And um, I mean, just no different than any other team that's played in the playoffs. The Rams had a shot at not being there. That's true. That's very, that's so true because, yeah. because uh, as, as Gary was saying, it, it could have gone either way for both teams. Right. One play here or there could have just changed the entire dynamics. Chris, you broke up. What did you say there? Uh, I, I, yeah, I was just going to say we're not going to talk about Stafford um, trying to throw an uh, interception in his. <laughs> <laughs> yep. But, so when you talk about either team, it's a little bit more up for grabs now. It's kind of like when Michael Jordan retired, you know. Nah all up for grabs now but um you got to look at guys like you know russell wilson is still around even though he's been struggling um he's you know got to be on the same level as aaron Rodgers as far as he's oh, yeah. one of should have won more um with the team around him even though they broke up that defense um shortly after they won the super bowl um <clears throat> you got guys like you know patrick mahomes still around obviously they'll come back better next year that was a complete meltdown at the end mm -hmm. and then you got, you know, Lamar Jackson kind of scratching the surface, hanging around, battling some injuries. Um, you got the young guys, Josh Allen, um, coming up, getting mm -hmm. more battle tested in the playoffs every year. He should be better next year. Um, obviously, Joe Burrow, um, obviously, Kyler Murray, they got to do something better next year than what they've been doing. Or Cliff Kingsbury's probably on his way out the door. <laughs> <laughs> you know, then you got Ryan Tannehill. They're going to be in it every year. Um, as long as he doesn't mess it up, they should be fine. <clears throat> I was super pissed. I, I, I was so angry with when the Tennessee Titans lost, but how it just because I because they have the team to win a Super Bowl. It's just mm -hmm. him. If they get rid of him, <laughs> like I mean, because I said it because we said it on our previous show. I was like, if he has to throw the ball, they're going to lose this game, and that's what happened. They put the See, ball in his. Hand. You said that. I like Tannehill. Um, <laughs> Chris compared him to Josh Allen. People, anybody, if anybody else outside of this heard that, they would think that's insane. I don't. I think he has talent. I mean, you think that's insane too? I think it's insane. <laughs> yeah, come, Josh Allen. I, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, I do because I think that Josh Allen see, he sees more than than Tannehill does and reacts and reacts better. Um, he may run Tannehill is more. Tannehill is more is more of a game manager. Than he is, you know. Then I think that he, then he is the, the guy who you you're going to put the ball in the tank and say, okay, drop it here, drop it there, or make that you know make that huge run. And Josh Josh, Josh brings that 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 third element to being a, you know being a quarterback to the game that 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 folks just simply fear. Not only is he is he a, a great run talent, but he also brings brings a, lot, a huge load with him too. So, so we got uh, one minute here. I'm gonna wrap this one up. I sent y'all the link for the new one. Y'all can jump in that one. Uh, you can take your time getting in, get some water, whatever y'all need to do. Uh, we can pick it up in 10 minutes from right now. Uh, so we can go and wrap, wrap up this segment. We will be right back with segment two here. I got some other stuff I want to get into. Whole list of topics. We just, we're scratching the surface here with this. I'm glad we got some passionate debate going on. So um, we'll be back for segment two, talking hats. We are out on segment one.